We're talking about the incredibly high cost of fraud and the very real chance it could be happening to your business, and it's hard to believe, but right under your nose. Les Lake is the Forensic Accounting Manager for Ide Bailey. He joins us today. Les, thank you so much for being with us. Yeah, thank you, Dale. Uh, let's start off with this idea that uh, the business owner sitting at home watching this is saying, oh, it's not happening in my business. And how often do you hear that when you actually get in and you start doing an investigation? You know, Dale, when I hear that, I realize that that's the most opportune time for a fraudster to take advantage of the opportunity. Mm. You see what we're looking at, we're not really looking at the, the typical bank robber who sticks a gun in the teller's face at the bank. What we're looking at is the most long-term, dedicated, loyal employee who's never late, never sick, never asked for much time off. At the same time, they feel a responsibility that they really can't leave the business much. And that is really the profile of a fraudster. Along with that, you wonder, why is it that your most dedicated employees are the ones that you really need to watch for? It's because that maybe they're experiencing some financial pressure. And with that financial pressure, they see an opportunity. And if they can connect it by rationalizing it, guess what? Fraud is going to take place. When you really look at small businesses, you realize that in their first year of business, 9 out of 10 of them don't make it. And the paradox to all that is, from our perspective, is that one out of three of startup businesses that don't make it in their first year are victims of fraud or embezzlement. That's incredible. That talks to the, you know, I was going to ask just how widespread is it, but when you look at those numbers, one out of three of the businesses closing are due to fraud, internal fraud, an employee stealing from a uh, the owner, and yeah. the owner not knowing it. That's yeah, huge. the average is uh, two out of three. Uh, two-thirds of the time or two out of three times that, that takes place it's by an employee and two-thirds of the time okay yeah. oh that's huge so let's talk about uh, the positive aspect how can a business protect itself what types of protections can that owner put in place to prevent this from happening the message from the top has got to be very clear that the owner absolutely will not tolerate fraud period mm -hmm. that's not an acceptable experience there, that's the first step. The second step would be for then the owner to implement a series of uh, uh, good internal controls. Separation of duties. Don't have the person who's, who's handling the cash record the entries in the books. Uh, also set up to where you have an independent view of what's going on. Have the business owner take a look and manage the performance of the business. Take ownership of it. The third part is really put a procedure in place so that they can in turn take and um, have policies or have the open door to where an employee when they see something they can actually come in and uh, uh, discuss that without being punished or reprimanded for that. Now, when we talk about this, uh, I can hear the small business owner, it's a one or two person operation, they're saying, you know what, I just don't have the people to put in those multiple layers of checks and balances in my organization. But they need to find some way to do that. Is, is that what I hear you saying? Absolutely, yeah. Put, put some kind of procedures in there to where you as the owner take the time out to look at it or have someone else look at it. But yeah, the, you know, the cost of, of hiring additional employees is, is oftentimes prohibitive and not realistic. But you've got to do something because the impact of fraud really is that uh, we lose about $994 billion a year to fraud. Now those are numbers from the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners and their statement to the nation in uh, 2008. The average loss for business owner for a business with 100 employees or less, $200,000 per occurrence. Per occurrence. Per occurrence. Now, I want to just wrap this up by talking about the importance, uh, you know, and this came, came out of a conversation you and I had a couple days ago about an organization who hired somebody, they found out that there was, that the person was embezzling and that they'd had a history of that. Yeah. But the, the previous management had not formally filed charges and taken it to law enforcement. And so this person, they just fired him, let him go. And when that happens, uh, you're really just putting this person on a silver platter for the, to take advantage of the next business. Absolutely. Yeah, you're facilitating that opportunity for them to continue on that habit that they have. Uh, what you really want to do when, when you're hiring new people, do a background check mm. and really have it done right so that that way you can at least see what, what you're bringing in and then from that then, then develop your policies from there. And then if you find somebody is uh, committing fraud in your organization, prosecute it. Absolutely. Don't let them move on. Don't just fire them and turn a blind eye. We have a responsibility as business owners to be responsible and to take action. You need to stop it. All right. Wes Lake, Ide Bailey, thank you so much for being thank with you. us today. Great information to protect our small businesses. When business at its best returns, we identify a challenge keeping a business owner up at night, then find the solution. It is next on Business at its Best.